everyone. This is Miss Melissa from Fibo Kids Art Academy. And today I'm going to show you guys how to make a really fun Mother's Day project. Um, Mother's Day is coming up this week and such a sentimental to give your mother or a loved one a handmade item. So for our project today, we're going to be creating a nice wreath and some floral patterns and designs going around the wreath. Now, so first thing, I'm going to show you guys what I'm working on. So what you're going to be needing today is any blank piece of paper. It doesn't even need to be that thick. You have the option of using color pencils or watercolors. Now I did two different versions. So if you want to go bigger, you might not have time to do all the details in this class, but you're more than welcome to continue after class. Use this as a guide. Now, if you want to go smaller and you have less time, it might be easier to add all those little fun details. So the first thing you're going to need is a blank piece of paper. We're going to either use color pencils or watercolors for the flowers. So you're doing the flowers in color and then all the extra details in a thin black marker. Now, if you're using a smaller paper, I would recommend using a thin marker. So I really like these micron markers. Honestly, it can be any brand, just as long as it's thin. It could be a really thin Sharpie as well. And the first thing we're gonna start with is a blank piece of paper and a pencil and eraser. Now, I'm actually going to use a marker right now but I want you guys to use your pencil. So I'm using the marker just so you can see what I'm doing, but you guys should use your pencils because we're gonna be doing a lot of erasing around the wreath. So I'm gonna do the first step with pencil because I need to erase this part too. The first thing we're gonna do is do our basic structure of our artwork, which is the wreath. Now you're welcome to do a square shaped one. So it doesn't have to be rectangle, can be circle. So I'm doing a rectangle. And again, it doesn't need to look perfect because you're going to erase because the whole point of this is creating greenery and floral patterns and designs going in and out of the wreath. So you're going to start with a big rectangle and then another one on the inside. All right, so you can do just light rough lines. This looks a little dark, but I'm just pressing dark so that you guys can see. All right, so now that we have the basic structure, so I'm switching to my marker, but I want you guys to keep using your pencil. We're going to start with the type in the middle. So the Happy Mother's Day lettering. Now you guys are welcome to do this any way you like. I'm going to keep the happy a little thin and the Mother's Day thicker. Now the fun thing about this is you could add little curls to your letters, you can add little designs, and you can always build on that later as you go. So we're gonna start with the H. You can always start simple and build on it. A, so I like to end each one with a little twirl. We can make that thick later just to go along with the pattern. So there's no perfect way to do this, no right or wrong way. Depends how much space you have. We want to try to make it big enough to fill out the whole top portion of our frame. We're going to add M. And then later on, we're actually gonna connect these to each other and to the frame. So 
Eve. We are, so we can start out nice and simple and then build on it. So you have happy mothers and then we're gonna add our day. So I'm gonna do that a little off to the side. And then again, any letter that you feel the chance to add some stylization and decorative elements, go ahead and do that. All right, so now I'm gonna connect the top edge of my M to the wreath to make it look like it's twirling around the wreath. And then the S. And then once you do that, we're gonna start making all the letters thicker. So almost like you're drawing a line on the inside of your letter and then we're gonna sharpie it. We're gonna make all of them thicker. And then even if they stick together, that's fine because that gives the look that they're more intertwined, which is the look that we're going for. So now you guys are still using your pencils here so that if there's a curve you didn't like, you can adjust it. And feel free if you wanna write this all in capital, even if you wanna change the lettering make this dedicated to someone else special in your life, you can do that too. So this is just a guide. Okay, right, so we have happy mothers. Now even for a day, you can make your Y a little thicker if you like. I'm still gonna keep this a little simpler than mothers, just so mothers can pop out. You can even make parts of your letter thick and leave other parts thin. That will show a lot more texture and movement and contrast. All right, so now that we have that down, we're gonna move on to the flowers. Now again, I'm going to outline my flowers with black, but it's important that your flowers are in pencil and that is because you're going to color over them. So we don't want rough, strong outlines on our flowers. We're gonna make them look natural. So we're gonna use color pencils to color over them. So I'm going to start with a flower to fill up each corner. I'm gonna to go to the top right corner. I always like to start with the center of my flower. Now there's so many different types of flowers out there. You can do carnations, tulips, roses. You can make up your own flower. So for this one, I'm gonna have it wrap around the wreath as well. I think that gives a really nice look. So in this whole project, we're gonna wrap some things around, under, some things over. And then I'm going to only do half of my flower up here, just the top part, because I want to put some leaves on it later. So I'm going to leave that blank. So I've got this flower. I'm going to move down here and do a nice rose tulip. So what that means is it can go either way. It has the petals that can look like a rose. And then you can even do the stem and have it go off the page. So that way it really looks full. So don't be afraid to crop. If you have an unfinished flower, just make it go off the page. And then later on, we're gonna do more of this, but since we're down here, you can add some stylized elements. So in nature, there's no specific concrete way of drawing all of this floral greenery. There's a lot of diverse flowers, a lot of diverse elements in nature. So you can really have fun with this. All right, I'm gonna go over here, add another flower. 
So for this one, I'm going to do petal by petal. I'm drawing curved rainbow lines at the top and then connecting them to the center, trying my best to be able to have an even number once I'm at the end. And then what's also fun that gives that 3D look is to do flowers on top of each other and under each other. So I'm gonna do a flower popping up from under this one. Now I want this one to have some thinner petals. I'm gonna do that under there. I'm gonna add another flower over here. So trying my best to make them look a little different even though it's small changes. Remember, you can always crop, have it go off the page, under another flower, and then later on, we're going to add leaves. So, also going to add a flower over here. So, you can even add them in other areas. It doesn't have to be the same areas I'm adding. You can hold your composition up high, look at it from the small distance and see where you feel like it needs more balance. So for me looking at it now, I want to add a little more flowers here and then I'm going to move on to my details. So I really want to add something that's coming out of the corner over here. So I'm going to add a rose or rose petals. as if it's like a sleeping flower over here. And then even if some things don't make sense to you, once you start doing them and you look at the composition as a whole, it gives that floral look. So I'm adding curved lines going down, maybe a petal is laying down off to the side, just how like flowers sometimes grow on vines, they follow the shape of the vine. Adding a little more over here. And you know if there's a specific flower that you want to draw, you can pause, look at a reference photo, maybe it's your mom's favorite flower. All right, so I think that's it for my flowers. You're welcome to add more depending on how much space you have. Now I'm gonna start adding my leaves. What I really like about this project is adding the leaves going around the green. So I'm gonna start over here and add a vine. So if it helps you, you can start with one line and then add the other line. Now I'm doing both at the same time just to show you guys. So this is going over it and then this is going to go under it. And now as you're going, if it helps, you can start erasing those lines so that you don't get mixed up later when you outline. So I erase the parts where my greenery is overlapping the leaf. Just so you know what goes where. So nice curved lines and then attached to this, you can add some leaves. So your leaves can look any way you like. Leaves are also very diverse in shape and color. Let's see, we can add a nice big leaf here. You can curve the edge. So I wasn't that happy with that leaf, so I just made it bigger. So you can always do that. It's very easy to adjust things with your pencil. Even if you're using black marker, you can just always add an extra line to make that work. All right, now I'm gonna add a leaf here. It looks like it's wrapping around my leaf. 
So the key to make it look like it's wrapping is such a tiny detail. So over here, you're gonna add a little curve and you wanna see that white space between the wreath and the leaf. So you know that it's going around it. We add another one. And then just like I said before, look at your composition, see where you would like to add some details even bring my previous photo up for reference. You could see kind of the difference in details. You can add leaves up here, you can add them in the corner, you can add them coming out of the M, really depending on the size of your paper. All right, so I'm gonna keep going with my details. I'm gonna add a long, vine here. This one's a little thinner. So it would help to just vary the sizes of all your elements. So even if you're using very simple materials, what gives that difference and contrast and helps elements stand out more than others is the size as well. So size and texture, and I'll show you how to do that later. All right, so we're adding leaves over here, here. Take a look at your composition. So I'm going to add a large leaf on the top over here. Now there's also, like I said, different ways to draw leaves. For the one up here, I'm gonna make it look more layered. So I'm almost gonna do like, a backwards S shape, so a curve, a curve over it. Then I'm just gonna go from there and follow the shape and just add curves. So it might take some practice to get this shape exactly right, but then again, there is no right or wrong when it comes to this. I'm gonna have it go a little under this petal. Add more over here. Same way. And then because I left the space up here, I'm going to add another leaf. So unlike these simple leaves, for this one, I'm gonna do zigzags on the side. So it looks more like an autumn leaf, just to have some variation. And then this petal up here, I'm just gonna finish it off, wrap it around, add one more here. And you know, my page is almost full, but I'm gonna add a couple more things in these white spots. Just a nice touch. So I really like this pattern because it's not necessarily something very distinct. It's just a line and a circle, but it still adds that look like those decorative stems that they add when you get a bouquet for your mom, whenever you bought flowers. You can just even add little twirly lines. More leaves. Let's see, I'm going to add one more little line up here. Now, once you're happy with everything you've added, you've looked up flowers maybe you wanna add, um, now you guys are going to outline everything. So, the only things you're not going to outline are your flowers. Now, that's actually up to you. So what I did in my previous work, so I'll show you how it's colored just so you guys can better understand. So over here, actually I'm gonna show you this one. Over here, my flowers are not outlined. So this is the difference between how they would look colored. So this looks a little more realistic than if you were to outline the flowers. So now it's your choice. So for this one, I left the flowers unoutlined and colored them and I outline the details and the Happy Mother's Day. This one is obviously all outlined, but again, it is your choice. 
So if you want to do it this way, you're going to leave your flowers as is and outline all the details on the Happy Mother's Day and the wreath. So I'm gonna start with a Sharpie. And I think the first thing that would be helpful to outline is the wreath, just so you know where everything is. All right, so I'm using my Sharpie now. So what helps is to outline first and then fill in the sections. So you're seeing here what part of your wreath is showing because maybe you didn't erase the lines earlier. And this is where your artwork really comes to life. If you look from afar, see how some things are filled in, some are not adding a little more depth to your artwork. And sometimes it's really tiny sections. So I have only that tiny section showing, but it really still gets the point across. Add over here. Now, if you have other markers, if you don't have a Sharpie, you can honestly use any material you want. I'm sure this is still gonna look great. So earlier I wanted to keep that part showing, but I actually decided to cover it because now that I look at it, I don't want that much of my wreath showing. So you can always change as you go along, adjust your artwork. Go around all of your elements. There we go, so all the bottom is covered and then you look at your top, let's see, I think, wow, only this part is showing. You know, sometimes you might surprise yourself. When you really get into your artwork, sometimes you don't even know what you're doing you really get guided by your enjoyment of your art, the flow that you're in. So try not to judge your artwork as you're creating. You can always redo it. If you really don't like it, you can always fix it. Everything is a learning experience. All right, so now I'm going to move on to my type. So I'm gonna start coloring in mothers since it's the biggest one. Now's the time that you can really adjust your lettering. So by that, I mean if you want to make things thicker. Now I started a little small because it's always easier to make things bigger with a black marker, but not necessarily smaller because it's permanent. I got the M. You can have fun and just add some curves. You can even make this type blocky versus cursive if that's what you want. Maybe you just want to keep it very simple. That's okay too. Maybe you want to add leaves inside. So, you know, this might not take super short time, but that's okay. Take your time with it. It's going to be our main message in our image. So we really want that to look nice and pop out. So it's going to pop out, but at the same time, it is blending in, which what makes it really interesting?
We're filling in all of our letters. If you notice, I connected my T to my H. And as long as it is somewhat legible, any way you do it is still fine. So this is a more stylized project. So it's not necessarily 100% realistic, but if that's what you're going for, you're welcome to do that too. Finishing this up. Now what you guys can be doing now is finishing up your lettering and then outlining all of your details. So again, keeping your flowers unoutlined in pencil and outlining all of your leaves and details. And then after this, we're going to move on to coloring. So you can take a step back, look at it, see where you want to add more details. I just jumped up to this Y. Need to go back down, finish the S. And you know, sometimes you can keep it thin, but just going over with it with a black marker is good enough. Not making it too thick. So having areas that are thick and thin, just like this Y, almost gives it a ribbon effect. So when a ribbon is rolled around or flipped, you only see some thin parts and some thick parts. We're going to keep doing that. And now this is where the S wraps around your wreath. You know, now's a good time. Maybe while you're doing all these little details, you can reflect on what you appreciate about your mom. Maybe you want to write her a card on the back of this. Maybe this is the front of a card. Maybe you want to frame it. You can think about something special to present your artwork with. You can write her a letter. That's always very sentimental. whoever you're creating this for. Just think about their positive qualities and why you're making this for them, what you want to tell them. And even if you don't say anything, your artwork will speak for itself. The fact that you took this time to create something for someone is always such a great gift. Almost there. Now, if you're done, you can just start erasing. All right. So I'm going to leave that like that for now. And if I want to add details, I'm going to add them later just so we can move on. So now you can start erasing all of your extra lines. So I have a lot of lines on my flowers. And at this time, we're gonna move on to our coloring. Now, if you have a thick paper, you can use watercolors. I'm going to use colored pencils. And then after we color, I'm gonna show you guys, as a last step, how to add some texture with your black markers. So just so you can see how with one color, you can do lines and little dots and little other forms of shading that really add contrast and depth to your artwork. All right, so I'm gonna grab my colored pencils. So we're gonna start with our large flowers. Now I've already pre-sharpened mine, so if you have not, um, I would advise you to sharpen your pencils because that's gonna help you shade the fastest and the neatest. So here are my colored pencils. I like to have them all out. 
Now I'm going to choose three colors to do each flower with. Sometimes it'll be four, but I always like to use at least three colors to add a lot of depth and realism. I'm going to choose some shades of pink and purple. Now you always want to use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel to start with. These are analogous colors. And the reason for that is that they blend together really nicely. So the different shades aren't too harsh, so they're not too different. They have just enough difference to make the blending with them look more realistic. So I always start with shading the whole thing one color, the lightest color, taking my medium, which I chose to be red here. And then with your darker color, the medium, you can go around the edges. Now I'm actually gonna press a little harder just so you guys can see on the screen but you do want to press light here. You always want to press light. And the way to make color pencils darker is to just build layers. So the key to shading like this is just having patience and knowing the technique. You don't need to be a super amazing artist. Everyone is an artist in their own way. You just need to know the techniques and I mean that's how I learned. I've always loved art but knowing the techniques really helped me bring my own artwork to another level. So then you take your darkest color, go around the edges again. And then another fun thing is you can take your medium color or even choose another color. So yellow let's say. A lot of flowers have yellow and go around the middle, the center, add a really light tint. So flowers are so multicolored. There's honestly no right or wrong with the colors that you choose. Even some black flowers, if you use black, just press lightly because it's really hard to go back from there. All right, so I did this. I'm gonna move up here. For that one, I'm gonna use some orange reddish shades. Kind of like that. I chose three colors. I'm going to start with orange. So just like I did earlier, shade the whole thing. Now again, your pencil should be sharpened and you're using the edge. So I'm not using the tip, pressing hard. So it wants to feel very effortless. You're not even holding it tightly. You're just going with the flow, shading lightly, taking your time. And the key to this is just building up layers. So I'm just giving you guys the guidelines here, but when I am done, you guys can take your time, build up layers. So you always want a base color. Well, this is my base color, my light orange. I'm gonna take my red, I'm gonna color the inside red. And then again, go along the edges. So the parts that are darker here are the parts where the petals hold on each other, over each other. So when a fabric folds and you look inside the fold, it's always darker than the color of the fabric. So it's all about examining the light. So if you're ever out in nature, just look at a flower, take your time, and just, you can see what parts are lighter, what parts are darker, where the light is hitting. Light never comes in the same direction. It's always a different direction depending on the time of the day, positioning. So that's also something to keep in mind. So the area on your object that's closest to the light source is going to be the lightest. And then the farther away will be the darkest. So now I'm taking my darker color, adding more layers. So notice I'm not coloring the whole thing. I'm just 
just going along some of the edges where it would be darker. And that's up to you. You can do different edges than me. Now, some of the flowers have nice lines in the middle here. So that's why I added some lines with my color pencil to give that effect. And then again, I really like how that yellow turned out. I'm gonna, instead of yellow, use a light orange. Well, this kind of looks like a yellow orange. That works too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing this really fast, but this takes some time. If you really want to get that shading right, so do not rush this. All right, so you're going to move on to the rest of your flowers. So you can even use the same color combos you did. I'm going to do that down here. Starting with orange as my base. And if you're using watercolors, you can use the same technique. You can start with a base color. And then to make it darker, you don't even need to add another color with watercolors. You can just use less water and more paint. So if you change the amount of water, you can create a value scale with your watercolors, which just means different shades of the same color. So you can do blue to medium blue to dark blue just by changing the amount of water that you use. For this one, I'm adding some light orange in the center. And then you can color the inside of the petal, maybe a red. You know, you can always start off this way at the end, take a look at your artwork again, see what else you want to adjust. I'm gonna make this one down here pink. Started with light pink again as my base layer. If your pencil gets dull, go ahead and sharpen it. It makes it a lot easier. I'm going to take a medium pink, shade lightly. Now, if you really want to get all the white spaces, the key is to shade in about four or five different directions. I know that sounds like a lot. So you're going to shade horizontal, vertical, Diagonal to the left and diagonal to the right. That's if you're really sitting down and taking your time. Maybe you have something movie playing in the background. After you see this, there's some music. That really helps me get in the zone and just not feel like I need a rush. Fast. Adding some yellow. You can even take, so instead of yellow, you can just take your medium color or another similar toned medium color. Go over the whole thing again. So then that way the yellow doesn't look like it's just lines in your flower. It more looks like a tint, just a small tint in the back. Right, and then you can go ahead and get your center. Might even be nice to mix a bit of black in the center for those flowers that are, okay, let's do a dark brown. Sometimes the black gets too dark. So just to be safe, I'm using a bit of dark brown. Okay. 
All right, so we just have a couple more flowers left. I'm gonna do those pretty quickly just to show you guys the next step so you can see it as a whole. So I'm gonna start with red for this one. And take purple. You can see I really like those shades of color. And if you want another tint, you can just shade the whole thing with your other color in a different direction. So see, I'm going a different direction. And I'm even going to take my brown and add a bit on the creases. My red again, do another layer. Then go down to, ooh, I forgot about our flower here. So depending on the quality as well of your color pencils, this might take longer or shorter. So some color pencils are better at blending. And even if you press really softly, it'll show up. But with some others, you might actually have to press harder. All right. So you can even think about your mom's favorite color and that would help you decide what to color all your flowers. So I just did those last flowers pretty basic, just to show you guys the next steps. But in the end, you can go back and adjust. All right, so once you get all your flowers for the details, since those, we left them black, we're gonna use our black marker. So you can use a Sharpie, but if you have a thinner marker, it might be better. I'm gonna use a black marker to add some texture. So, Texture just means um, it doesn't look flat. So your object will look like it has some depth to it. So sometimes that even means making a line thicker. I know it's such a small thing, but it really pops out more. So you can go to your leaves, make some of the lines thicker. You can add the veins. You can make the veins stylized as well. Now something I like doing is you could add little dots. So when you look at these dots from far, it looks like your object is almost colored. And you might not be able to see it that much on the screen, but try it out at home. So you can make the dots closer together and that looks like a darker color, farther away and that looks lighter. The dots are always fun to add texture. You can add little lines. For example, I'll do that down here. And this looks like there's a little bit of shading as well. So the key is the lines aren't stuck together. You're not actually coloring this in with lines. You're just adding lines that are far apart. Now I'll go right here. And you're not filling in the whole thing. You could add long ones around the side, thin ones in the middle. I like to add the lines on the small leaves. So this really helps if you have a thin marker. If you don't, then maybe just outline certain things with your Sharpie. There, so that really makes it look like it's fuller. Let's see over here, I'm gonna add some lines. Okay. 
even on your vines. You can make them look like there's a bunch by adding lines inside those. And then if you look at this from far, like even that I added those simple lines and I'm looking on the screen right now, I can already see that it looks like shading and shadow. So this is something that you can experiment with and have fun with. So even the leaf up here, you can mix it up here. So you can make some lines thicker. And then add polka dots to some, add lines to some. So this is making it look more stylized. So then again, it depends on what you are looking for. And now's a good time, you know, since we're at the end, we're kind of fixing things up now. You can look at your lettering and see what you want to adjust. I want to add another curve on my A. That, what I like doing is you can start connecting the letters to each other. Now that might be challenging. It depends on how far apart they are. For example, let's see, I'm going to connect the H to the M. So if you're using black marker, it looks a little, a little easier. So it's easier to do this. Then it really looks like it's all coming together and it's full. So even looking at this, I would say I would like to add later on a couple more flowers and really make it full. So that depends on the look that you are going for. So now's the time to add the extra details. The lines in your leaf. Let's see what I'm missing over here. The veins. Even the veins don't have to be straight lines. The leaf veins always look different too. So notice how I just mixed up the lines there and that added a nice autumn leaf texture. making it thicker on the side to look like there's shading. So if you make it black, blacker on one side, so that means just add a bit more lines there. It'll look like there's a light source. I'm adjusting my M, my H. You can even add some leaves coming out. Let's see the type. We can add one here, going through the flower. So that depends on how much you want this to look like it is in the wreath. So if I'm even connecting my P to my H. Let's see how I have to add a little curve to that and kind of make it thicker so it looked more natural. So that is up to you. So if you want to make them all connected, let's see, I'll connect some of them, even this, make it bigger. All right, so the last thing I didn't add things to do is this. So this is the last thing I'm going to do before we wrap it up. I just added more lines. Now I know I said these were petals, but now that I'm looking at it, I kind of want it to just be details. So, I mean, there's no rules. You can always make those changes as you go along. Dots. Maybe in the end, you still want to add more texture. You can take your color pencil and go over the whole thing, maybe in the background. All right, hi guys, it's me again. All right, well, I really hope you guys enjoyed that project. It was fun for me. I hope you learned some interesting techniques that you can take with you. Um, if you did this and you're on our Facebook group, please post it. I really want to see how it turned out for you guys, what message you use, what flowers you use, how you add a texture. Um, again, happy Mother's Day, and I hope you guys enjoy your day. Bye!